Hello, hello, and welcome to this month's Lunch and Learn. This month's Lunch and Learn is how to recession-proof your nonprofit organization. So uncertainty is definitely a common sentiment felt across any industry, but for nonprofits, these times can be felt real hard. <laughs> and if not approached in the right manner, it can just spiral hard. So how can you protect your nonprofit from lean times? We're going to answer those questions during this webinar. We're going to take 50 minutes or less. So sit back and relax. My name is Sarah Perry, your friendly neighborhood <laughs> marketing gal. Hello, this is me. I'm going to pop in and out over the webinar and let's get started. Who are Third Angle and Sarah Perry? First and foremost, Third Angle is a marketing company out of Colorado Springs, Colorado, where we provide busy time to start businesses and nonprofits and a whole bunch of other industries, some new and old school marketing services and strategies. And then me, I'm your Jane of all trades, just loves marketing. Do a whole bunch of different things in the marketing world. I've been here for a while. So I've seen a thing or two, I know a thing or two. And when I'm not doing marketing, I am painstakingly starting my first time in painting. Please send help. But enough about us it is time for a quick disclaimer. So I'm gonna talk about some financially stuff. Uh, I'm not a financial planner. I don't play one on TV nor on this webinar. So take everything I say with a grain of salt, all right? And then I will be talking about some different products or services during this presentation. And I'm not getting paid to talk about any of this. I'm just doing it out of kindness of my heart because I love working with these pieces of software and these products. So if you wanna use them, they're not gonna benefit me they're just going to benefit you if you use them. So let's dive in. <laughs> All right. So you want to recession proof your nonprofit. So how do, how do you go about doing that? There are four different ways to do that. And when combined, create a great foundation to do just that. First and foremost, you need to build predictable income. And a great way of doing that is by using multiple sources of income. And they will essentially help you bridge the low points in your budget. They'll create bridges. Next up is to showcase your true value. They're going to essentially help you learn how to humble brag in the right way to help your patrons fully understand the impact and the worth that you bring to your community. And then next, learn how to communicate, communicate to do. <laughs> That's ironic. Confidently communicate that value and reduce friction when asking for donations. Essentially, take the sleaze out of sales on the donation ask. And then finally, invest internally. Learn how to invest in yourselves to not be afraid to spend a little money on yourself to make things easier, more efficient, and just better for your team. And learn how to spend wisely. So those are the four areas that we're going to talk about today. So first and foremost, we're going to talk first about building predictable income, because if you don't got no money, you can't do anything else. When it comes to the multiple sources of income, this is a great visual I like to use because we all know the cliff, cliffs and valleys analogy. So donations and grants are really what fund nonprofits. So when those don't happen because of, for instance, scary recessions or a grant falling through, this is your budget taking a nosedive. But when you have other sources of income coming in, they bridge the gap between them and essentially just kind of make you go across the, the valleys and make things a little bit easier. Now, let's put this into a visual that isn't so cartoony. Here we go. So this is your budget of just essentially your core budget. The, keep the lights going, pay the core staff, and just keep the wheels going over 12 months. Your pink is your donations, your yellow is your grant money, and the purpley blue is your other sources of income. The pink, yeah, sometimes it's really great, especially, for instance, for this example, is the ending part of the year. Other times, ooh, it's not so great. <laughs> for grant money, sometimes it looks really good, and then sometimes it's not. 
So that is where the other sources of income come in. They can fill the gaps and essentially keep you where you need to be and not have to worry so much about, can we pay the light bill this month? But what are some examples of even multiple sources of income? What are some examples of that? Great question, Sarah. <laughs> so some unexpected sources of income are first and foremost, offering services to other organizations, host classes or events. Now, the events part I know is not new for nonprofits. You guys do galas and all that stuff all the time. But hosting services and uh, for other organizations and classes might be something new. And this might be towards your actual patrons or it might be to other organizations. And we'll talk more about that in a second. Another unexpected but really great source of potential income is renting out unused space. This is super popular with uh, some churches, especially because churches aren't in their facility seven days a week. They're in their facility certain days of the week. Sundays are popular. <laughs> but for other days of the week, like Tuesdays and Thursdays, which are super popular for networking groups, they can run out spaces to those types of groups or other local organizations or things like that. So it's a great way to just uh, bring in some additional income, but at the same time, you know, also get more use out of your building. Another one that is somewhat unexpected, like, but can be unexpected, is to sell merch that resonates with your audience. Now, you, we can go straight to the branded, but you can do unbranded items. And I've got a great example of that when I get there. But you can also do um, items like collaborating with outside creators. This can be artwork and all that good stuff. And I wanted to highlight some great vendors for this, which is bonfire.com, printful.com, and Sticker Mule. All three of these provide great online resources for this. And you can actually just like sell uh, for the first two, you can do online stores with. The second one is just a straight vendor. They're all great. And then the, the last one here, I love this one. It's is start a $5 army or the tongue in cheek donation with benefits. <laughs> Instead of doing the for only so many cents a day, it's just, it's five bucks a month. It's a cup of coffee, you know, because the one issue that comes up with for so many cents a day is you still end up in the, you know, 20 to 40, whatever, so many uh, dollars a month. But for five bucks a month, it's pretty palatable for folks. The big kicker on this one is though, is sometimes you, you really want to do something exclusive for being a part of Little Club. These are very popular with content creators, but can be translated very well to nonprofits. These are done through a website called Patreon. These are very popular. And then uh, YouTube, if you're already on YouTube, they have memberships there. And you can also do this through your own website. Very, very straightforward. Now, examples. All right, Humane Society of Weld County, they used Bonfire and they took their logo, picked a couple different pieces of apparel, picked a different color of apparel, and then created an online store. Boom, done. Straightforward and simple. <laughs> it doesn't have to be rocket surgery, <laughs> but they're able to get some sales off this and bring in income. They're not, you know, for obvious reasons, they're not getting the full price of this because it, you would bring in the cost of the shirt, but it is income. And the other benefit of this is the fact that they're getting their logo out there, which is spreading the word about the actual organization. So that's good as well. Then you have Serenity Recovery Connection, completely different type of organization. And a lot of things that they do comes from peer groups. Well, how do you get more peers to do the coaching and stuff, well, you need a peer academy. So they created their peer academy, coaching academy and they have a whole academy built around it to help get more coaches for their peer program. Boom, wonderful income opportunity. Garner the Gods Visitor and Nature Center. They have tons of events for uh, just, oh my goodness, so many different things. But they also do actual uh, big events that are hosted at their facility as well. They really play up on the events because I mean, 
Who wouldn't want to do an event at the Garden of the Gods? It's beautiful there. Then even more examples. Second Chance Humane Society has a really interesting take on the selling things aspect. They actually have a couple thrift stores in addition to an art gallery. Instead of branding their own items, they took it another route. They went, you have things you want to get rid of, we'll donate them to us, and then we'll sell them, and then those proceeds go to our core purpose, which is helping the animals and the shelter. And then same thing with the gallery, they took that and said, let's collaborate, and then we'll create art, sell that, and proceeds go to the shelter. Boom. Wonderful idea. And then the Colorado Nonprofit Association they offer services and memberships and everything like that towards nonprofits and even local businesses and even individuals. But the core thing is towards nonprofits of essentially helping nonprofits be better nonprofits. Amazing, great revenue or uh, revenue stream and income stream to make even better nonprofits. And then alongside Wildlife Foundation, they use Patreon. Here are those little tiny uh, recurring donations to essentially create recurring donations on a very simple basis. They actually have six levels that range from a dollar all the way up to a hundred dollars. So it does get high. And then they have different like little bennies that come with it. And there's nothing super overly complicated about these, but here are some examples of unexpected sources of income. Now, I'm not saying you need to do all six of these. Please don't do that. <laughs> Figure out one of these that really resonates with you and your organization and research it and figure out how to make it work for you. On to topic number two, showcasing your true value. Let's learn how to humble brag. <laughs> but before we get on to humble brag, we need to talk about something in the big purple box. Don't sacrifice quality for quantity. Now, when you start creating content, you're going to get a push pull happen here. And that is essentially you're gonna to get told to create more and more and more and more and more and more content. And while that is true, because the more content you have, the more digital real estate that you're gonna have online for people to find you. But at the same time, you don't wanna produce ho-hum content, okay? And the other part of this is you don't wanna burn yourself out. So there's balance here, okay? That's my little soapbox, <laughs> my purple soapbox. <laughs> Moving on from that. When it comes to creating content, before you start as well, you need to review your actual donor base and figure out what kind of buckets your actual donors fit into. Most likely you've got your big donor box of, of big donors, but there's probably some buckets that like two to four buckets that they fit into. The better you segment, the more impact your contact is gonna have content is gonna have. Doing that is gonna be helpful. And then making sure whatever the content you're creating is making sure the core purpose of that is showcasing the impact that your programs and just all that you do is showcasing all of that. It's that's the core purpose of it all. Now what kind of content? Now, just like in a regular for-profit business and they have a sales funnel, there is technically a sales funnel within a nonprofit organization, except we're just going to, instead of call it a sale a buyer stage, this is a donor stage. It's just been rebranded. So there's, there's essentially three stages, the awareness, consideration, and decision. And these are the percentages of content that need to be created roughly. About 45% of your content needs to be at the top of the funnel, the awareness stage. They're just being aware of who you are and it needs to be attention grabbing and top level info. This is like some very flashy information uh, for, you know, animal folks. It's the big picture of the puppy. Don't go Sarah McLaughlin level, please. Okay, we're not going that level. <laughs> But you get my point. It's who are we? This is what we do. Okay. We're amazing. Love us. Maybe just some light infographics. Don't get too heavy on the statistics and everything, but it's attention grabbing. Then you've got a little bit less. The 35% of your content needs to be consideration. So it's the, this is where you get a little statistic -y, Okay. So the impact of what's happening, be informative. This is where you might want to do a little, few little case studies. This is where you get some more infographics that have a bit more punch to them and everything. And then you've got your decision stage where this is, you have your clear proposition and the proposition will be the next topic I'll talk about the 
give us money, please <laughs> portion. But this is where you do your success stories. This is also the addition to showing impact. You know, this is also a little bit where you can potentially do this behind the scenes even of we're, we're a great organization and this is where your money's going, all that good stuff. And then miscellaneous, because there's always a miscellaneous. <laughs> Because you're always going to do something that's just not going to fit in one of these three categories. And yes, I'm aware all of this adds up to 105%. Because why not? All right. Next up, let's talk about sharing. So when it comes to sharing content, you can share it anywhere that makes sense to you. And that can mean a lot of different things. That could mean you share it in a direct mail campaign with a physical letter. That can mean in an email campaign. That can mean social media. That can mean hosting webinars like one of these. That can mean in a networking group, in an event, you know, all of these different places. It's got to make sense to your organization. But when it comes to sharing things, I'm going to kind of lean this towards a little bit uh, towards social media since a lot of times that is where things happen. Um, in a digital sense, at least. But no matter what, create schedules that make sense to your organization's capabilities. And please, please, please start slowly. Okay, don't create schedules that are going to overwhelm yourself. I don't care how ambitious you think you are. Half it. <laughs> I can tell you from experience, I have burned myself on this. Okay, so please please pair back on what you think you can do, okay? And then just as a pro tip, batch. If you if you need to create a bunch of stuff, do it all at once, you know? Don't try and scatter it across your week. Give yourself like two hour window to do a whole bunch of the same thing. It'll You'll actually be surprised how much you get done. And then also when you're sharing the content, use the classic 80-20 rule. Don't sell more than 20% of the time. Okay, it gets real, real annoying when you've got an, an organization that's like, donate today. Hey, we're doing all this stuff. Donate today. Share your impact and just share it to share. Okay, it, it's, it gets kind of uh, overwhelming when you've got folks trying to just say, donate, 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 and, and you turn off people. Don't worry, they will donate if you show them impact. If you just tell them that you need all the money and you don't tell them why, that's when you start getting into the skeezy salesman. And then to make things even more easier <laughs> for you for the content creation, ex specifically for social media, is put things into content buckets. These are the content buckets that we actually use internally for a third angle and for a lot of our clients as well. And it is these buckets, motivational and fun, promotional, blog posts and BTS behind the scenes, not the band, engaging and educational. So those five buckets are really great because they can cover a large gamut and tweak as needed, obviously. But those are great uh, things to kind of fit generalized content in and they work well with these three here. Okay. So follow those buckets to help with. Again, wait, wait, wait. Please start slow. Okay, please start slow. <laughs> and I'm bringing my face in here for impact. <laughs> so the other part of this is consider your limitation. And I've put it in all caps in pink, but consider outsourcing things. Writers are pretty much like the by and large most outsourced item when it comes to things that need to be outsourced in a business or organization, okay? It's, it's not a shameful thing, outsource, okay? Um, especially when it comes to like blog content and everything. There are great writers out there. I love writing, but I know my limits. <laughs> and I also know some really, really great social media folks that they just know how to write for social media and create for social media. Don't be afraid to seek out professionals in those areas. And trust me, the good ones know how to make it feel seamless to your organization. And then think of this as an investment in your organization. That's where, you know, we were talking about don't be, you know, don't be afraid to invest internally. This is kind of alluding to that. 
invest internally because trust me, when it's done right, it will pay off. Now, some two quick don'ts. Don't be on every social media platform. Like really, it's not necessary. Like unless you're like the world's biggest organization and even them, if you really look closely, they're not on every single platform pick wisely, okay? If you are a nonprofit organization that focuses on senior citizens, TikTok, TikTok may not be the best platform for you. I mean, if your donors are like 15 to 20, okay, yes, maybe. And if you make that work, please send me your account so I can follow because I would love to be proved wrong. <laughs> but you do not have to be on every single one, okay? Don't be pushed into anything. And then create, like, don't create content for content's sake. Just have purpose to whatever you do. Just have purpose. Okay, all right. How to appeal to your donors in lean times. First and foremost, be transparent about your organization's financial situation and the impact of donations. I feel like I've said this already. <laughs> Okay, there's gonna be a lot of repeating because it makes sense. And make sure to demonstrate that impact in the words and your appeals and everything like that. And then don't forget to offer a variety of ways to people to donate and everything. So what does that a little bit look like? Essentially speak to your donors as if they were a person and make them go, oh my God, that's me. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> but no, seriously, what does that actually look like? This looks like this. This is a real example. And what I've got circled in red is a wonderful, perfect example of creating transparency without being overly just like weird. And that is, it costs the Humane Society of Weld County approximately $250,000 a year to provide pre-adoption medical care so that our dogs and cats can be placed in their new homes. Boom, done. Statement. There you go. That is a great way of creating transparency to a donor saying, wow, that's a lot of money. <laughs> it's more than I make in a year. But right there, it shows that, hey, this is why we need we need your donations. It's a lot of money to keep up on all of this stuff. And the statement right before this that's actually underneath and kind of blocked out by the circle is the bold statement, we simply refuse to let medical expenses be the limiting factor of saving an animal's life. And then they go into the statement of this is how much it cost us. So amazing, great example of that. Number two, the clearly demonstrating an impact of your donations. This is another example, same organization is the top section up in here tells the story of this dog and it's not all Sarah McLaughlin-esque, but it's just very clearly stated. But at the bottom here is the, and this is exactly why the Humane Society of Wealth County created an emergency relief program. Although such proceeds are expensive, we want to be able to do everything within our power to provide comfort, reduce pain and extend life-saving procedures to animals like Raven. And it's our supporters, you, that make all this possible. So it doesn't have to be sleazy. It doesn't have to be Sarah McLaughlin. There is a middle ground. And it is this. It's a great example of that. And this isn't saying you need to donate $900 today. It's basically just saying donate. And then here are some great ways in a letter when this is actually attached to that first example of different ways to provide in one like appeals letter. And this is actually a physical letter mailed of ways to people to donate because there are some old school people that like to send in a check. So they offer the check and then you've got the online version and then even the call. Some people will call. So here are a few different ways. So the clear that communicating isn't hard. It's just not having to feel like you need to over explain yourself. And then at the same time, not feeling like you literally have to yank <laughs> on the actual heartstrings of people. You can just tug, just tug. All right, finally, it's time to invest in yourself. Treat yourself, okay? So now, the key thing here, the goal, the entire goal of this thing is to work smarter, not harder, okay? 
Before you ever do anything, there's a few things that you need to do. And that is to survey the team that you're working with for the good, the bad, and the ugly. And if it needs to be anonymous, let it be anonymous. There are ways to do this. But you need to survey because you need to figure out where the frustrations are. Because in reality, you might think the frustrations are A, B, and C, when in reality, it is D, F, and A. <laughs> you never know until you ask. And then you need to review your expenses at a, in a clinical way. Do not bring emotion into expenses. I know it's hard, especially when you're very invested. And in if you're a smaller organization, especially. So the big thing in two is to cut obvious items but be, don't be afraid to add, okay? And when I say cut items, cut with a scalpel, not a chainsaw, okay? <laughs> and be aware that some tech may be helpful, but tech will never save you. Like, tech will never be the answer. It's always a enhancement. It's not a solution, okay? And then finally, when it comes to uh, just other things just to be helpful, and this is kind of where I say tech stuff, is that audit your processes. Processes need to be audited regularly, please. Just just regular. Pick a timeline, okay? And not like every 10 years. <laughs> Quarter time rates. A year? You know, pick something that is reasonable because they may work, yes, but are they efficient? Okay, something that has worked for six years, is the software the same if it uses software? Are the people even there that did it before that wrote it? Okay, this needs to be done. And then your standard operating procedures, your SOPs, where do they live? If it is a five inch manual book that sits on a shelf, how, how much dust is on it? I'll wait. <laughs> If there's dust on it, it's time. It needs to be reviewed. If it's in a digital format, when was the last time it was looked at? So invest in yourself because in the grand scheme of things, I could go over a whole bunch of other stuff, obviously training and all that good things. But in reality, these are the core things that need to happen. Like if I were just to like scrape everything out, these items need to happen. Okay. Now, from an outside in, from someone who has worked with a lot of agencies and everything like that, or not agencies, but nonprofits, and uh, there are a few items that I have noticed on a repetitive basis that are some pitfalls that I feel like some software, and I'm, I'm going to, <laughs> I say this so, I say this so tentatively because technology won't save you, but it will help. And I feel like these three pieces of software will help greatly. It will help. <laughs> but they do need to be implemented properly. And I will be here for you if you do implement these, okay? Uh, and if there is great outcry for me to make uh, a additional webinar on how to implement these, I will do so but they are communication. Nonprofits, I love you all. You all love email. <laughs> and the biggest issue I have found, and, and all joking aside, the biggest issue I find with email and nonprofits is the, the confusion that happens in email. And there is confusion that can happen with a program like Slack. And before I go any further, what Slack is, is a chat program on steroids. That is really the long short of it. But the reason I recommend Slack is one, it's free. <laughs> there is a free version. There is paid, but there is a really robust free version. Me and my team have used it for, I don't even know how many years now, but it does help. There is a desktop version. There is a browser version, there is a phone version, all of the versions. And it basically gets your team out of your email inbox and it is not uh, reliant on having everyone have the same email address. So it can really streamline communications. The big thing is, is with the channels, 
um, being able to, if there is a particular event, um, event management is a big thing I've seen for nonprofits is having all the communications clearly in one spot where people can go back and refer back to, uh, or just being able to have quick conversations with so and Lisa together privately, but you can go back. Now the free version does only have a 90 day span of like history, but still Slack is one of those uh, places I've actually talked with just a, a handful of nonprofits and it has been stated, but not implemented. But I do feel like this is one of those things where this could be a game changer for some nonprofits of just uh, cleaning up communication. The next one is password security. If I could eliminate password keeping in spreadsheets, I would feel like I have saved the world. The one benefit of this, now this is one of those items that I would, it is paid. I, there is a free version, but this is one I would say paid. Because the security factor of this is that the reality of nonprofits, there is a slightly higher rate of turnover with a lot of nonprofits. And the fact of this is, is that if you have a team member leave, and you set them up, for instance, with an email address that is from the nonprofit. So john at nonprofit.org. They leave, you cease access to that email address, and you turn off all access to all of the passwords that they have. It's a great security feature. And I feel like uh, as a lot of nonprofits, uh, there's a lot of confusion on who has this account, who is that account. And this is actually a thing that's not even just related to nonprofits. It's a big thing with everybody, just a lot of businesses. But this is something that I feel like a slight bit of tech could be extremely helpful for folks and just keeping accounts straightforward and sharing with people. And then finally, creating content. So this is probably the most fun of them all uh, <laughs> because it is. But Canva, if you are not already aware, Canva is a wonderful online tool. They also now have a desktop version, uh, which is essentially the same thing as their browser. It's just downloadable. But the beautiful thing about Canva is they do currently, at the time of uh, this webinar, they have a free, they offer the, their premium version free to all nonprofits. So if you have not taken advantage of that yet, do it. Because I don't know how long they're probably gonna be doing that. <laughs> But go ahead and do that because the, there is a few little things on Canva that they've been releasing that are pretty dang nifty. And one of the little, I don't even want to say hidden, but a lot of people just don't use it, is the social media scheduling. There's a social media scheduling tool that I'm pretty sure is, is available on here because it is the premium version. I wouldn't suspect they would nerf nonprofit version, but it is available and the uh, you can create pretty much almost any content on there. This entire presentation was created on Canva. So really, really great tool. But those are the just the few items of tech that I would recommend. And then here are all the others that I'm not gonna talk about, but if you have questions, I will gladly, gladly talk to you about. Oh, here, let me remind my face so you can actually see them all. But it is time to invest internally. And I know it ironically says reduce internal costs by investing internally and all of these will cost you money. But in the grand scheme of things, when you invest in yourself smartly, you will actually make things a lot easier on your staff. I'm going to take a look at Q&A real quick. I love it. No questions. So let me go ahead and do my shameless plug. If you are not subscribed to our amazing Third Angle YouTube channel, please go ahead and do so already. And don't forget, hit that notification bell so you can be notified every time we have a new video. Ding, ding. If you have any questions, if, if you're feeling stuck, check out my Calendly. I will be glad to schedule a time to meet with you and chat with you and just get you unstuck, essentially. With that, I'm going to take over the whole screen and say thank you so much for attending. My name is Sarah Perry, and I'm with Third Angle. Thank you so much for watching. That's it for today. Have a wonderful day. Bye, guys.